Bruno Ganz as Adolf Hitler in his most famous role in Downfall. More on him later, but first, welcome to Kino, the German film magazine. Hitler shot himself in his Berlin bunker just a few blocks from here. But that bullet didn't stop the terror the Nazis unleashed in Europe. After the war, the government of Czechoslovakia expelled millions of ethnic Germans living in their country, calling them collaborators and traitors. Thousands died. Now a film tells their story on screen for the first time. Nineteen thirty-seven. German entrepreneur August Habermann marries a Czech woman, Jana, in the Sudetenland. Their happiness is short-lived. The Nazis occupy large parts of the country. Habermann is naive and thinks at first that everything will remain the same. Was wird sich denn groß ändern? Die Grenze nun hier oder dort verläuft? Na ja. Du bist Deutscher. Für dich wird sich wohl nicht viel verändern, aber für uns Tschechen wird sich alles verändern. Vielen wird's besser gehen. Hitler hat Arbeit gebracht. Unser Holz, unser Mehl, das können wir jetzt bis nach Bayern verkaufen. Das ist einer der der was wagt, aber aus einer He's someone who dares to do something. Unternehmerischen Although his approach is more or less as a businessman and then fails dismally. I find that deeply tragic. Hochtragisch. Habermann soon has to recognize that his status and influence are no longer worth anything and that he can no longer be proud to be a German. Ja. Nur weiter Herrschaften. Aber in Deutsch, wenn ich bitten darf. Der Vater ist doch Deutscher. Ja, ich bin Deutscher. Und meine Frau ist Tschechin. Haben Sie denn kein passendes deutsches Mädel gefunden? Tja, das Herz kennt ja bekanntlich keine Rassen. A few Czechs try to mobilize the population against the Nazis, but resistance is hopeless. Ich habe Sie etwas gefragt. Haben Sie so etwas schon mal gesehen? Ne. Mich würde interessieren, was Sie darüber denken, Herr Hauer. Wer verteilt sowas wohl? Hm? Ich weiß nicht. Oh doch. Ich glaube, Sie wissen wer. I think we Germans, even in my generation, which really had nothing to do with it, or later generations, it's not necessarily about feeling guilty. It's about dealing with the story. The film shows how violence breeds violence. After the end of World War II, Germans, Nazis or not, are brutally expelled from the country. Director Juraj Herz depicts this in suitably dramatic images. Only a few years ago, showing this would have been a scandal in his home country. For Czechs, discussing the violent expulsion and murder of the Sudeten Germans was taboo for decades. I was frightened. No, not frightened, that's not the right word. It didn't matter to me, because I experienced it and wanted to show it that way. But I expected many people to get in touch and say, the Germans started it and we weren't like that. But not a single one did. After the war, the Czechs expelled three million Sudeten Germans from their homes. How many died while fleeing is unclear. Estimates range from 20,000 to a quarter of a million. Victims of starvation, disease or murder. Austrian actress Franziska Weiss plays a supporting role in Habermann. Her own grandparents were Sudeten Germans. Das sind 
Horror-Szenarien beschrieben. There are nightmare scenarios. Things my grandmother probably didn't see herself, but terrible things happened. And of course it shocked me to realize they could have happened to my grandparents as well. But aside from my own family being potential victims, that sort of butchery is appalling, no matter who's subjected to it. To this day, victims and their families have campaigned in vain for compensation. The expulsion is marked once a year at the Sudeten Germans annual meeting. But the issues of guilt and atonement aren't easy to resolve. For me, the most confusing element in dealing with this material was the empathy I developed for the Czech's desire for revenge. The more I dealt with the history and understood what happened. In the film's strongest scene, Habermann tries to buy the lives of several Czechs with jewelry. Und dafür lassen Sie die restlichen zwölf am Leben. Das ist das wertvollste Stück in Eglau. Tut mir leid. Aber zehn Tschechen muss ich hinrichten lassen. Der Tod von zwei deutschen Soldaten kann nicht ungesühnt bleiben. Das verstehen Sie doch. Ich stehe auch unter Beobachtung. Unfortunately, not all the film is that intense. But if for nothing else, Habermann deserves recognition for the fact that Germans, Austrians and Czechs work together to tell this story. Habermann is already a huge success in the Czech Republic, both at the box office and with the critics. But now for something completely different. Director Veit Helmer likes to go to strange, obscure places to shoot his films. His new one is set on the barren steppes of Kazakhstan at the world's largest rocket launch pad. It's where the Soviets first shot men into orbit and it's where we went to check out the offbeat love story Baikonur. A squabble at the break of day somewhere on the steppes of the Caucasus, as envisioned by Veit Helmer. Okay, one more rehearsal. So you walk a little bit slow and he will try to run a little bit faster. Excellent. Baikonur is a love story set in Central Asia. Julie, wait. Stay away from me. I swear to you, look at this. Stop calling me that stupid name. I'm not your damn cock. Mich interessieren Geschichten. I'm interested in stories that don't happen all the time right in front of my door. Cinema can whisk you off to lands far, far away. Don't call me that stupid name. I'm not your dumb taco guy. But I love you. And you love me too. I love you. How could I love you? Who are you? You're savage. The village idiot. Julie from France and the Kazakh Iskander. For the actors, it's uncharted territory. This is my first time outside Russia, my first time so far away from home. The steps are amazing. There's nothing like it where I'm from. It's an amazing country. I was really surprised actually to discover it. Um, uh, very interesting people and they have, I think they carry their stories on their face. It's really, it's quite something. Baikonur in Kazakhstan is home to a Russian-operated Cosmodrome, a rocket launch pad. It's where millionaires pay top dollar to get shot into space, cosmic tourism. The first manned orbital flight began here in 1961. Each launch makes a mess, with discarded propulsion units and fuel tanks littering the steps. People here build homes and huts out of the space junk, and they look amazing on film. More than a thousand kilometers away, in southern Kazakhstan, Helmer built a fake village as his set. Here, the space waste has been recreated in wood. Iskander lives in this yurt. Can you try? Sorry, can you try? Maybe. I don't know if it works, but Nikolai would really like to have this here. It's been a long day. Nerves are fraying. Maybe we try. Tiho! Snimaya! Blah, blah, blah. Now we shoot. Sound! 
Natalie. Helmer is shooting the film in English and Russian. The plot goes like this. The Russian space agency loses one of its space tourist customers, Julie. And the local farmhand, Iskander, finds her. A space alien proves to be a gift from heaven. Iskander becomes a local celebrity for having saved her, and his dream is to become an astronaut too. Julie is played by supermodel Marie de Villepin, and Iskander by Russian actor Alexander Azochakov. I like the plot, but we're always doing little scenes in different locations. I would rather shoot the whole film from beginning to end in the right order. I think there's no better way to learn how to always be prepared and act and do costume and hair and makeup and everything at, the, at once when it's like under pressure, under the gun. So. The budget is 3 million euros, Helmer's biggest so far. The pressure on the crew is also bigger than ever. And there are other forces to be reckoned with. I have one co-producer in Russia and another in Kazakhstan, and they're both a bit worried about the way their countries come across in the film. So I had to make sure the village doesn't look too poor, and I had to have a Kazakh astronaut as well. The village folk are played by village folk, extras cast locally. They're looking forward to seeing the film, which is set to be released here too next year. It's going very well. We're so happy they're shooting Baikonur here. I can show the world how happy we are with the Cosmodrome. It's all very exciting for us. I've never been in a film before. I wish them every success. Things get a little frantic on set in the evening. She can get off. She can get. Uh, she doesn't want to. Well, it doesn't matter what she wants then. Да, быстро. А нет, не ты. Просто вы лошади ставьте за верблюда. Helmer is shooting a scene at sundown. There isn't much time to get it right. This is a fantastic location. Great wide vistas, untouched by civilization. I didn't want any roads or electricity pylons to be visible. You have to go to considerable lengths to make a beautiful film. Will Feitelmer captivate European audiences with his cosmic fables set in remotest Central Asia? We'll find out when Baikonur is released next year. We're here on the balcony of Berlin's premier film school, the German Film and Television Academy. Students here won big at this year's German short film festival. Just the thing to kick off our shortcuts. The prestigious awards were presented by Germany's culture minister, Bernd Neumann, at a ceremony in Hamburg. The 2010 German Short Film Award, in gold, for a film of between 7 and 30 minutes in length, goes to Robert Bohrer for Manolo. Bora and his crew are students at the DFFB Film School in Berlin. Manolo is about a shy boy who goes to the swimming pool with his cooler older cousin. The jury praised the humor and the sheer joy in filmmaking. As boys compete for attention, the camera work is breathtaking. Hey, Cousin, come on over. The award comes with 30,000 euros and is a boost to any filmmaker's career. Prestigious predecessors include Wim Wenders and Tom Tukva. 
Making shorts is a lot of fun, but of course I would rather make a full-length movie or a TV series. The award for animation went to Love and Theft, itself a tribute to the art form. Animation really comes into its own in shorts. For some, short films are a stepping stone, for others the perfect vehicle. The awards pay tribute to the creative punch that can be packed into just a few minutes. Heute ist der 14. November 2020. Sie sagen, dass es in den kommenden Tagen sehr kalt werden soll. Vor allem dort, wo mein Sohn Johann und ich hinfahren. Laura decides to flee from her home in Germany. The fourth Gulf War is underway. Cecilia wants to resist and change things. The coming days is about a dark world full of conflict and about two sisters who go very different ways. Laura devotes herself to her studies and her family, even as the world goes to rack and ruin. A group of radicals disables the internet and plans attacks on the state. Cecilia is drawn to them and makes contact. Wovon reden die Leute hier eigentlich? Von Terrorismus. Was ist denn das? Terrorismus. Weiß mir aus. Diese Leute hier. Die wollen das Denken verändern. Ich will wissen, ob die Menschen töten wollen. Nein. Nein, aber sie sind bereit zur Gegengewalt. The coming days paints a scary picture of the future, but by focusing so intently on private dramas, loses sight of the bigger political landscape. Kennengelernt habe ich den gar nicht. Gar nicht bis jetzt. Das, das ist ja der Punkt. Getroffen habe ich den nicht. Ich, ich habe ihn nur getroffen. Fahrradladen. Sie hat mich angesprochen. Er hat einen Platten. Sie hat mich gefragt, warum ich den Platten nicht selber flicke. Ich habe dem ein echtes Fahrrad repariert. Und er hat gekocht. Obwohl ich sagen muss, wenn ich ihm den Platten so repariert hätte, wie der gekocht hat, dann wäre er damit nicht mal in die Innenstadt gekommen. Claire and Leo have been together for two years. We hear all about the highs and lows of their love for one another. It would be a verbal duel, except they address the audience, not each other. Das hat mich echt wütend gemacht, dass der keinerlei Anstalten gemacht hat, mich ins Bett zu bekommen. Nur weil einem ein Mädchen das Fahrrad repariert, deswegen schlafe ich ja nicht gleich bei dir. Two people in their 30s compute the pros and cons of being together to see if they have a future. Ich hasse ihn. Ich finde ihn übrigens ganz süß. Also wenn du dich von ihm trennst, gib mir Bescheid. Ich wüsste schon, wie ich ihn trösten kann. Das hast du jetzt nicht gesagt. Nein, das habe ich nur gedacht. Wie kommt es, dass du das hören konntest? Claire, lachst du jetzt mal? Quirky gags and snappy dialogue. The characters don't react as expected. Meine Mutter, Vater, der Leo. Hallo. Also ich sag's mal lieber gleich. Ich darf nicht über Kartonagen, Politik und außereuropäisches Ausland sprechen. Wir dürfen nicht über Krankheiten, über unser neues Auto und über ihre Umweltprojekte reden. <lacht> Wie war dein Vormittag? Gut. Ralf Westhoffs Der letzte schöne Herbsttag, The Last Nice Day of Autumn, is a witty review of the vicissitudes of love in everyday life. Bruno Ganz already has a star on Berlin's new Walk of Fame. The Swiss-born actor has been on Europe's A-list for more than 40 years. Ganz has always avoided the limelight, but on December 4th he will be honored with a Lifetime Achievement Prize at the European Film Awards. Time then for a look back on the man and his work. This is a film about me. Bruno Ganz, Schauspieler. Uhren. 
Sie lassen uns glauben, wir hätten die Zeit im Griff. Ich habe immer weniger im Griff. The many faces of Bruno Ganz. In the day of the cat, he plays the Swiss president. Playing someone named Tomcat implies virility, so that's flattering. Guns began his career in the 1970s with Berlin's prestigious Schaubühne Theatre Ensemble, where he became a star of the stage. Wim Wenders discovered him for the cinema. German auteur films brought the actor his first international recognition. Wings of Desire by Wim Wenders was his great breakthrough. An angel looking for a place in the world. Whether angel or devil, Bruno Ganz displays the humanity in every character, even Adolf Hitler, whom he plays as a broken man. His emotional interpretation of the dictator was moving and disconcerting. It brought the epic downfall an Oscar nomination and the actor worldwide recognition. Things have gone well for me. I've had lots of luck and I've been diligent. I have a tendency to cut myself off when I work. I'm not the most communicative person in any case. And with things like these, I somehow have to protect myself in order to stay concentrated. Let's certainly respond for my colleagues and co-workers, because I then say I want to go home to bed instead of going out to eat with them. There have been situations where, thinking back, I've regretted things that have happened, or that I've hurt people's feelings or rebuffed them. Ganz's performances, however, are always credible and touching, like this delightful old man. Nein, Großvater, das ist gut, das wollen wir. Ja? Ja. Du bist Millionär. Ja. Ja. <laughs> wir haben es geschafft. Ganz can choose his roles. In the Bader Meinhof complex, he plays Horst Herold, head of the federal police. Die in der Illegalität lebenden Terroristen sind natürlich bei keiner Behörde gemeldet, wie zum Beispiel Einwohnermeldeämter. Sie können deshalb auch kein Bankkonto einrichten. Sie zahlen also ihre Mieten bar. Haben Sie keinen Appetit? In the Oscar-winning The Reader, featuring Kate Winslet, he plays a professor discussing with his students justice, revenge and individual responsibility under fascism. For or against? Both. You are not guilty of anything merely by working at Auschwitz. Despite his success, the actor keeps his private life private and his feet firmly on the ground. I don't know whether things would have been very different if I'd become a carpenter. I don't see myself as having paid a great price for my success, not in the least. Ich habe mein ganzes Leben lang gemacht, was ich wollte. Ich habe ungeheuer intensiv gelebt und ich habe nicht das Gefühl, als hätte ich irgendetwas versäumt. In his latest film, Bruno Ganz plays the Italian journalist Tiziano Terziani. Time and again he plays people who are dying or terminally ill. You ask yourself once in a while what it was all for. But with me, it also has a strong professional aspect. I do hold myself to account for what I've done with my life and what I haven't done, what was good and what wasn't. Early in 2010, he was elected president of the German Film Academy, together with Iris Berben. But that doesn't mean he's giving up acting. As long as people give me good roles to play that interest me, and as long as a day of shooting isn't an ordeal, because I can't endure it physically, and I keep enjoying it, and it interests me, and I can do it without difficulty, I'd like to keep acting. 
mich, ja, ohne mich zu quälen. But I also expect there'll come a day when I'll say I don't think I can do it anymore, because I'm too weak or something. Ich schon damit, dass ein Tag kommt, wo ich sage, das, das mute ich mir nicht mehr zu. For Bruno Ganz, 2010 has been a year of accolades. Congratulations. Today we're giving away two films featuring Bruno Ganz, Downfall and the Bader Meinhof Complex. For a chance to win, just write to us with your personal critique of our show. Here's our email address. Kino at dw-world.de That's all for today's show, but we're back in December for our holiday edition. Under the big Christmas tree here on Potsdamer Platz, we'll look back at the best German films of the year. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>